What is it they say on TikTok? Something traumatic happened that changed my life, check! Good morning! How are you all doing on this fine, glorious, sunny day? You know, pandemic aside and all. Welcome back to my life. Hello, mini moon. If you've never been here before and it's your first time, welcome. Take a seat. If you have been here before, you know, hi! The keen eye amongst you may have noticed that I did not put a video out on Thursday. If you watch my channel, and if you do, then thank you. Subscribe if you do like this and share the shit out of me. That sounded weird, but do it. Do it. I didn't put a video out on uh, Thursday because I had the most traumatic experience of my life. So far, I mean, there's probably plenty to come. God knows. What's your matter? I have dogs because, you know, dogs are life. Look at this one. She's just adorable. You're just adorable. Do you want to tell the story? <laughs> so it's time. A day like any other. <laughs> And I was gonna film myself a nice little video. The plan was to go and find some cute red squirrels to feed, hand feed. The intentions were good, it was starting off well. Um, I even did a nice intro just like this one. Would you like to go on another wildlife adventure with me? Okay. Mission today, find a red squirrel. This should be an interesting challenge. I'm hopeful that I will, and today, get to feed a squirrel. It's a nice, glorious, sunny day. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go get some nuts, because apparently they really like chestnuts. And I want to get them their favourite snack so we can become squirrel friends. Okay, let's go. Oh, bless her. Isn't she cute? No idea about the disasters to come. So, I even went to the shop and got them some nuts. So we're just going to have a quick stop to go and get some nuts because they need to have nuts. I want to give them my nuts. <laughs> In we go for food. Squirrel food. Let's go. Yep. Everything was cool, everything was hunky-dory. Bob, the plan was to drive out to a forest, which is a little bit down the road from where I live, and, you know, just go on my merry little way and film some squirrels and, you know, have a jolly time all round, like exciting times, happy days. I got there and the park was closed due to the coronavirus outbreak. That should have been my first clue to um, stop. But alas, I carried on. <laughs> I arrived and I was like, right, I will not be defeated. I will go around the side of it and see if there is any wildlife to see. Trying to be my bad David Attenborough self. So I went out and had a little look around without my camera and anything to see what I could see. And then I thought, oh, I best go back to the car. I took a pillow to sit on, you know, got to protect the tush and nuts and a camera, obviously, to film. So I went back for them. And I intended, keyword intended, to grab my phone along with my camera and everything else. And for some godforsaken unknown reason, didn't take my phone. I go back into the forest and I'm having a whale of a time, looking around, thinking, mm, is there wildlife up there? Is there wildlife up there? All the while I'm saying to myself, well, the car's just over, over there, so you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> I even sat down, sat on my pillow, had a little look. I even made jokes about how glorious it was to be surrounded by the wilderness with no people. What better place could you wish to be in the middle of a corona outbreak, pandemic, crisis? No humans, just, you know, vast space. Yes, I did. Little did I know. <laughs> <sighs> I carried on glancing around for wildlife and at some point, can't really say when, I had inadvertently walked a bit further into this forest. I probably haven't described the forest enough, the forest was intense. We are in the vicinity of where the red squirrels apparently do live. As you can see it's a vast, um, vast space. So, um, this could take a while. This is massive. It was an intense forest. There was no clear pathways, though it was built up. Picture like, you know, like 
horror films, you know, where someone runs out into the forest and gets lost and, and it's night time and someone's chasing them. Think of Blair Witch. Think of nightmares. That's what I was thinking of <laughs> eventually. <laughs> At some point, I obviously got very distracted and carried on my merry way. I was oblivious. Everything was still fine. I was enjoying myself. Then I got a bit too keen. Before I knew it, um, I was lost in the middle of a eight mile vast extensive forest on my own <laughs> with no phone. <laughs> I realised at this point that I'd gone a little bit further than I intended to but I wasn't panicking, no. I wasn't panicking. I was still keeping a cool head. I was like, it's okay, Claire, you will be fine. Um, just retrace your steps. Tried retracing my steps. Some some unbeknown reason to me, probably because I was in the middle of a forest with no clear tracks or path through, I ended up coming out of the forest. Oh, I'm out of the forest, but I'm not where my car is parked. Oh dear. I was a little concerned. Had I have known how concerned I should have been, then I probably would have been a lot more concerned. But I was still obviously deluding myself. Came out of the forest into this side road and I was like, oh, I don't know where I am. So I went back in again and tried some other ways and you know, fast forward probably two hours, I still had not found my way back to the car. This might not sound very traumatic, but we're in the middle of a pandemic at the minute, in case you hadn't noticed. There was not a soul about. No civilization. Down the road is probably Chainsaw Massacre guy who eats people. You know that kind of vibe? I was getting a little stressed, a little bit at this point, and I thought, right, I'll walk down the road and see where the road leads. All roads probably lead back to one another, and I'm sure if I just take the path, it'll lead me back to the car. It's a, it's a good theory. It was about five paths going off round the forest, and uh, I tried every single one of them. And I'm not gonna lie, at this point, in and out of madness, the vast open space when I looked around was making me feel like I, uh, like I couldn't breathe. So I went back into the forest for a second time. Here's where my greatest decision making skills kicked in. I was walking deeper and deeper into an eight mile forest, aimlessly walking in any direction I felt looked familiar. Just for future reference, if you ever get lost anywhere. That is not the right course of action. I arrived at the forest at one o'clock. I could see the sun sort of starting to go a little bit dimmer and I was thinking, hmm, <laughs> you know what wouldn't be fun? Being in the middle of this forest in the dark. If it gets dark, I am fucked. I was starting to seriously panic. I was tripping over, falling over, things were cutting my legs. I fell over flat on my face a couple of times. I had a long maxi dress on. After trailing around the inside of the forest again for an hour, cutting my legs to shreds. There was like massive sharp branches sticking sideways that quite easily have probably impaled me if I'd have fallen on one. Here's some emergency TV programs where people get lost on their own in the wilderness and they don't have any way out and they break a leg. Well, that was probably what was waiting for me. I did injure my pelvis though and somehow I ended up with groin strain. <laughs> that sounds like something you would get when you're having fun. The realisation set in that I can't get back to my car and I don't have a phone and nobody knows I'm here. I tried shouting to see if there was anyone there, you know the classic Hello! Hello! Is anybody there? Help! You know that kind of thing. I felt stupid but I was like well you know stupidity's not got any place in this situation. I was like you are an idiot, this is how you're gonna die. I was like right, what you've got to do now is you've got to admit that you're an idiot and you've got to walk back to where the field was and you've got to walk to the nearest house to get help. At one point I was like maybe I should just curl up in a ball and sob and cry and just wait to see if anything happens. And then I guess the fight instinct kicked in and I was like you can sit and cry all day long and then nobody's gonna just find you in the wilderness. 
with no phone. I went to the field, climbed over a fence with all my gear. There were sheep, it was a vast, long field, the houses were in the very distance, and I dragged my aching, bleeding body to the nearest house that I could find. The fact that I could see a car next to the houses was my only hope. I was like, we're gonna be okay. Bearing in mind, I was crying, probably had mascara down my face. Two people, a couple, a man and a woman. And they looked a little bit disturbed as to why I'd randomly come upon their house in the middle of nowhere. I was like, I've been lost in the forest for three hours and I haven't got a phone and I don't know what to do. I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but please can you drive me to my car so I can go home? They were looking at me like I was literally a zombie that had just rocked up to the house in the middle of a zombie apocalypse because it's kind of like what I did, really. They didn't look like they wanted to help me at all. They were the strangest people I'd ever met. But what do I do? I either die in the forest or die with the weirdos. So I chose the weirdos. So there was a barbed wire fence and they were like, well, I don't know how you're going to get over. And I was like, well, I could climb it. And they were like, well, you won't be able to get over that fence. And I was like, I live in the country. I've just been lost in a forest for five million hours. Three. I could climb a fence. They reluctantly let me sit on a chair in their premises. The man said, I will take your keys and I will go walk to your car and drive it back to you, which is highly illegal because he's not insured to drive my car. But at this stage, I was like, sure, if it gets me out of here, go for it. So I handed over my car keys to the strange man. I sat down and had an awkward conversation with the woman about how they get lovely red squirrels every day and they saw patches the other day and I was like, wonderful, glorious, I'm so happy for you. All I could think about was getting back to my car and going home. Anyway, I, I made it home and I told my mum the traumatic story and I had a hot bath and I was very traumatized and cried a lot more. I didn't care about making a YouTube video, but at one point I was so delusional, so traumatized, I decided to film myself in the middle of it. Here you go, you can have this as a treat. Warning, the following footage contains a emotional British person, which is rarely ever seen. I'm so lost, I just wanna go home. There's no one here, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. I'm in the middle of nowhere on my fucking own. I don't have a clue what to do. <laughs> this road could go on for miles and I've got no phone. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed me sharing my traumatic experience of how I got lost in a forest on my own and nearly died. Subscribe if you like. Goodbye. <laughs>